Crawley with Talkback on BBC Radio Ulster. Welcome back. Seven minutes past one. We are talking about your social media history. We've all got a social media history. Uh, those tweets, videos that you may have taken, them, birthday parties, weddings, all kinds of things over the years, Instagram posts, the whole lot. Should your social media post, though, be held against you? Conor McMiniman was withdrawn from the Northern Ireland squad hours before Saturday's home win over Kosovo. The Irish FA say he was pulled from the team quote, in light of an historic social media video. Then came a U-turn, and the Irish FA say he's now back in the team, pending an internal review of that video and whether he broke their rules. It's likely that he hasn't broken their rules because the video is, as we understand it, from seven years ago, but that's yet to be confirmed. Is it time people relax a bit more about other people's social media past? Everybody has a past? Draw a line under some of that stuff. Or is it inevitable, do you think, that what you've tweeted or what you've written on Facebook or what you've posted anywhere, for that matter, will always be there? And at any point, maybe you're applying for a new job, maybe you're standing for parliament, maybe you're trying to get success in sports or in some other kind of public domain, at any point, it's hanging over you like a sword of Democles, ready to strike. 0 30 30, 80 55, 55. You can text A1771. The journalist Mark Bain has been writing about the, the Conor McMenamin story in the Belfast Telegraph today. Kevin Curran's also with us, professor of cyber security at Ulster University, and he specializes also in social media. Good to have you with us. Kevin, it's always going to be there, isn't it? You can't ever get rid of that stuff. Yes, the internet doesn't forget. Um, of course, there is there is social media um, companies which will try to um, bury your your you know your tweets or whatever else. But it, it is difficult on social media. But whatever you write there will remain, and people forget the asynchronous nature of the internet. Where you might be having a few glasses of wine in your in your room, sometime you feel strongly about something, and you post something, and you forget about it, and it could lie dormant for weeks, months, and years in some cases, as we see, and then it's brought to the forefront. So you just got to be able to stand over everything you write online. And do you get nowadays, do you get companies who go looking for that kind of stuff, quarrying through people's past? It's not as common as you think, because generally when it comes to employment in tech companies, I can only speak about tech companies, you're generally so busy. We will always check LinkedIn. Um, but really, very few I know, you know, and I've done many interviews the last few years, but we don't really go checking on Facebook and on Twitter for these things. We just presume that the person in front of you has the skills to do their job. Yes, we do LinkedIn because that's a business social network, but we don't make any, in fact, it's kind of unfair. You should judge the person in front of you. Now, yes, if something comes to light later that is completely against, we you know, the company's policies or just, you know, against society, mm -hmm. then action can be taken. But I don't think people really go burying through all the social media profiles of people that they're hiring. Uh, Mark, uh, when you look at what's happened with these two footballers, the Laverty stories there too in the last few days, Cal Laverty, uh, it seems to be increasingly a, an issue in the world of football. Well, yeah, it, it, it definitely does. Um, but I, I know there's, there's been two incidents over the past few days. Now, if we take them in context, one was historic and one was quite recent. I think we, we need to draw a bit of a distinction between something that somebody has written or tweeted or been in a video of seven, eight years ago mm -hmm. when times were slightly different. Um, there wasn't such scrutiny. Um, seven years ago wasn't, wasn't that long time ago. It so wasn't 2015. that long ago, but we got to look at the, the age of the people that were involved. You know, Conor McMenamin would have been a teenager at the time. 20, I think, was he? Yeah, he was 19 or 20. Um, um, it's something that's, that's put out there today or yesterday. It's, it's seen in a different context today than something that would have been, you know, tweeted or Facebook or Instagram seven or eight years ago, we, we need to start kind of drawing some sort of a line on this because, if, as you said earlier, everybody has a social media history. Everybody has said something in the past that maybe they shouldn't have said. Mm -hmm. I was writing in the, the Belfast Telegraph today, taking a look at something that George Best had said back back in the, the 60s, early 70s. Mm -hmm. 
if he wasn't playing football, he would still be throwing stones at Catholics. Now, do we now take a look at George Best in a completely different light because of something he said historically? You know, we, we need to start... Well, lots of people look at George Best in all kinds of lights anyway because, I mean, that's probably... Not, that's, there's lots of other things he said and did that um, have brought criticism of, to George Best. But I took that quote as a famous quote. I took that quote to mean that uh, getting involved in football pulled him away from kind of sectarian activities. Yeah, well, and the way you could look at that, I mean, I guess, guess you, you could look at anybody in, in life who, who's had a social media present, presence. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could take time, scroll through all the previous tweets and take them out for whatever context you want. Mm hmm there needs to be some sort of line drawn. Yes, people might have made a mistake in the past, but let's not punish them for the past. But the important thing is that they learn from it. Um, there's got to be an education thing like that in this day and age. And the IFA have, have made great strides in tackling sectarianism in the sport. Allow them to, to develop that, but don't go back and drag up everything that somebody has said in the past and punish them in the present. The important thing is that they learn from it. Yeah. Education has to be the way forward. Uh, Kevin, what is the past? You you mentioned the asynchronicity of the internet. Everything's present in the internet in terms of that tweet you put out there. It can pop up again and it looks as present as a tweet from yesterday, even though it may be 10 years old, right? So how do you draw a line? How could you, if you wanted to, draw a line? It is difficult. In cases like this, you kind of take them on a case-by-case basis. Um, and again, maybe how long they are. But that is scary. That is seven years ago. And people do change, of course. But the fact is there, you know, maybe people should do... Um, to do checks on the social media and look back in their historic posts and go back further, especially if you're public profile, really. That, that's where the danger is. You know, yeah. generally people don't go and made a friend and go back seven years in their feed. But of course, there's people looking for this, of course, and just come out. So again, you just can be careful. Go back maybe and delete some of these posts that you don't stand over anymore. That, you know, that was a mistake. But again, you, you know, that's the danger. Don't try to be too smart when it comes to social media. You know, and people are, they do stuff and you know really and they're the people that get caught out but generally the secure people who are secure in their own personality as well tend not to post too much on social media and they tend to not have you know to get this public acclaim really so <laughs> you just got to be careful are you serious so if you post a lot on social media it's a sign that you're insecure no, it depends on the nature of it. It depends on what your yeah. job is. Of course it is, yeah. But if you're posting a lot of personal stuff, yeah, you can see it. You can see it in, pre in people's personalities. Oh, no, it. I see it too. It's, it yeah. looks quite narcissistic. It is. It is. Uh, people who can't go to a gym without taking a picture of themselves in the mirror. Uh, they, can't, they can't eat without taking pictures of their food so you can see yeah. what they're eating. What is going on there psychologically? Well, people want acclimation, you know, and social media is so easy to get and some people are awkward in normal situations. And of course, young people now are growing up with social media and of course, they don't have as much face-to-face -face communication, especially during COVID. So we're faced with a generation in the future where the, where the next generation, the, the social media generation, will not have the correct facial expression if you tell them maybe that your partner died, but they'll have the correct emoji. Oh, wow, that's awful, isn't it? Uh, Squinter says here, flip it round. Uh, what about the vast majority of people who behave themselves online? Is there to be no reputational plus for decency and restraint? Declan uh, says there's no excuse for sectarianism from those who hold enormous influence with the public. Mark, when you say, you know, let's just get over it, shouldn't there be consequences if you've expressed racism or sectarianism or homophobia? or transphobia in the past that's very abusive of individuals, shouldn't there be consequences? Well, I think it's, it's, it's like I said, the consequences have to be a better future. There has to be a recognition that, yes, what we said in the past was wrong and learn from it. That, that's got to be the key here. I mean, you know, like I said, everybody has possibly said something in the past. That, does that mean no consequences? It doesn't mean no consequence. The consequence has to be that they learn from it, and that there has to be an education now that this, some of the things in the past might have been. So gone. if they just say, "Sorry about that," yeah, I did. I did engage in pretty egregious sectarianism there, but sorry about that. Well, there's, 
Obviously, the IFA at, at the weekend, the consequence for, for Connor was that he was dropped from the squad. Um, that, when, that, that's obvious. But, uh, so I don't know what, what the IFA thinking is on, on that one. But, you know, as, as people need to learn. I mean, 10, 15 years ago, Northern Ireland was, was a different place. And we, we, need, to, we need to improve. We need to improve, but to improve. when you say we need to draw a line, where do you draw the line? I mean, you can, if someone puts, um, let's just be hypothetical here, Mark, if, if somebody posts out stuff, we were just talking about the rise of fascism and stuff like that, uh, puts out pro-fascist, pro-neo-Nazi material when they're 23 or 24, and then we come around and you say, well, they're, they're 30 now, you know, it's another era, things have changed. Have they, really? If they demonstrate that they have, I mean, the... the be some sort of contrition now there's got to be some sort of acknowledgement that what they they did was wrong if it means they they miss a football match i mean so mm -hmm. i think i wonder I mean, we can ask the audience, 0, 30, 30, 80, 55, 55. But Kevin, I wonder if most people would be as gracious or as generous as Mark is, is being there with uh, a pro-neo-Nazi tweet from eight years ago. I suspect most people will say, you know, uh, a leopard doesn't change its spots, that kind of thing. And that one, I would agree, William. I mean, that's, you know, um, in any anti-Semitism at all, I, I think people are um, have a disturbed heart, really, to go there because it just makes no sense logically or in, in a spiritual sense as well. So there is something that actually is something which really people do not change their opinions on, really. But people can say can make mistakes and that you're right it's the first time ever i've been involved in discussion and it's really come up where where is the moratorium where is the limit on how far, far back we go and then we'd have to treat people differently according to their mm -hmm. ages there isn't we're never going to reach that we're never going to have a framework for that we're never going to set the guidelines really so it will always come down in these cases and most of these cases will always be public profile individuals again so again you know that's part of the um you know the, the downside sometimes they're becoming you know a public figure but um I can't see us having any hard and hard set rules on you know what age or how long back can it go really against yes us. yeah and if you're a public figure you will have enemies yep. you'll have com opponents you'll have competitors whether it's in sport or politics or some other area and and some of those people may be out to find that stuff kevin and and sometimes they can employ companies to go looking for it uh, they can yeah and there's companies also which can vary but um Really, but it comes back again. You know, what are these things you've said? And the, the, the danger is, of course, the, the downside is, of course, society does change. There are things we can't say now. We can, there's areas that none of us would touch with a barge pole. And on Mark's radio. right, isn't he? You're, you're allowed to make mistakes when you're a kid. You're allowed to grow up, for goodness sake, aren't you? You are, but. But uh, but in this harsh world, really, where you know, like people just get upset about many many things. Really, um, it seems that people really don't want to apply the forgiveness you know to anything mm. online really at times it's, it's it's a harsh world i wonder mark uh, mark bain's back he's, he just dropped off the phone yeah. line there for a second hi mark um you know if if you post something out when you're 14 you're 15 yeah you know i get it if you post it out when you're 35 yeah it's, it's difficult to say i was young and inexperienced right um at yeah. what age do you get that the benefit of the doubt well, I, I guess everybody matures at different ages. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 the problem with this thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like we were saying, you you got to treat every case differently. But I mean, that there's going to be so much out there. I mean, everybody, like you said, has a social media presence. Do we basically just check everybody's past to see if there's something that they said ten years ago? that doesn't equate with what we believe today. Mm. I mean, I, you know, if, if you watch Sky TV and you watch the movie channel, there's a lot of films now come up with a little disclaimer at the start. This film has outdated attitudes, language, and cultural descriptions, <laughs> which may cause offense today. But we still watch the Carry On films. We still watch, I mean, even, even films like The Jungle Book has that warning in front of it. Yes. We, we still watch those programs today. Dam Busters. We see them in a slightly yes. different light. It has Dam Busters, because in the name of the dog. Um, has it? Yeah, people can still watch it. I can't imagine you put that in your Twitter feed, though.
<laughs> under your name. By the way, this Twitter feed includes some attitudes and material from, you know, that, yeah, it's, it's, you're more likely to delete it if you're worried about it, aren't you? Yeah, well, that's, that's maybe something people should do. Just sort of take a take half a day sometime at the weekend and go back through their feed and have a look at some things they said that they might be, yeah. might, might find embarrassing. I just say, look, that's not me anymore. I, that's not what I believe. Kevin, I know that there are some there are some political parties who advise candidates for election. They they simply say, you know what, just scrub your social media because you don't know what you've forgotten. Just scrub it and start again. Can you start again, Kevin? Well, you, you can. You can delete. But unfortunately, there are scrapers out there which historically have scraped Twitter for most tweets and Facebook and these things. So it's not a guarantee if you do that. Of course, you can start a new account. You can go back and delete tweets. But no, unfortunately, most of the web is scraped. Um, in other words, they're stored in archives and used by um, third party, used by advertisers, basically. That's why all social media is scraped. So it's a, you could be found out if... Um, if it was up long enough and, yeah, you know, your, your tweets can be found historically on third-party sites. Uh, somebody says, uh, what about some of our present-day politicians who expressed sectarian views years ago? And that's probably even before Twitter. Plenty of anti-Catholic remarks by politicians still in politics today, online. I hope you question them. Uh, you're probably not going to read this out. I don't know why you think I wouldn't read that out, but, I mean, that that's... That's the nature of it, isn't it? We've got people who are politicians who may have said things in the past, and then when they put themselves up for election, they they move on if they're elected. And, and it's kind of, I don't know what he, if this is the right term, Kevin, but it's kind of priced in, isn't it? When you vote for a politician who has that kind of rhetorical past, you know what you're getting. Exactly, um, in, in that case. Um... Uh, yeah, but I, I don't. I, I know that politicians. I've been under uh, politicians have um, in the past got themselves into trouble here in Northern Ireland by posting things again, which, but but, but they were caught at the instance. There weren't so much historical, from what I remember. But you know, at the end of the day, two people have to be able to stand over what they've said and what their thoughts were. You know, because the majority of these people are adults, really. You know, that there's cases where we'll give someone maybe a bit of leeway, but no, you know. You know, you got to stand over what you said, what you posted, and if it's still there, you know, you just can't you can't have your cake and eat it really, and expect people um, just to ignore, you know, just to take the, the things that you said and the posts you did, maybe especially in the in the political arena where you're trying to get um, a higher profile, you're trying to get votes, whatever. So you know, whatever you tweeted, yeah. positive. You got to you know, stand up for what you did wrong. And then, Mark, you wonder who decides what's really offensive and what isn't because some of that's in the eye of the beholder some of our listeners are saying sexism is taking a lot more for granted on social media than for example racism these days yeah well there are a lot of people there who basically go out to be offended as well we've got to remember that that they will find offense in in, in, in anything um what do you, I mean, well, that's a curious you were, response to the sexism point yeah, well, you, you were you were speaking about politicians there. Well, and that, that, that I, guess, guess, uh, I guess that listener was was wondering whether we we turn a blind eye to sexism more often than we would, for example, to racism. Yeah, well, the, the, I guess the highest profile one most recently would have been back in, in January, where we had the Ulster Unionist Party leader Doug Beatty, and yeah. the, the, the tweets when he, he was back in the army that that caused quite a quite a conversation. And some of them more recently, yeah. Yeah, now those those were historic tweets, and he came forward. And to be fair to Doug, he, he came on he came on Radio Ulster at the he time, did. Yeah. and he was grilled for for an hour on it. Um, he, he showed contrition. He he apologised. Within a few days, we had Sinn Fein. We had three MLAs from Sinn Fein come out to yeah. apologise for tweets that maybe people hadn't even noticed. So yes, in a way, it's good that. These are coming out, and people are apologising for mm -hmm. them, but holding them to account for something that they maybe said ten years ago, in today's age, it just doesn't sit as comfortably as if somebody had just said it yesterday. Kevin, we use this term historic. Historic tweets means in the past. Well, every tweet, in a sense, is in the past, right? Yeah. At what point does it become an historic tweet? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, Twitter is around 14 years now, really. Yeah. So <laughs> it's quite young. It is, yeah. Historic tweet. Go- goodness, that's a difficult one, really. Uh, yeah. Well, there is no difference. I mean, I was a racist 10 years ago, but don't hold that against me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, you know what I, yeah, but it is difficult, you know. And to be honest, I always tell my students, I don't worry, I teach cybersecurity. I don't worry so much about it. People worry about your details online and whatever else, you know, your cat's name and all that, which is fair enough. You know, mm-hmm. try and give as less as you can. But I worry more about the time wasting of social media. I, 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 yeah. I see the students and yeah. I think, you know, I, I give an exam every, you know, at the end of the year and for the one, for the two hours, they have to turn their phone off and I literally have to reassure them that, look at, hang on, your friends and family will still love you when you're, when the exam's over. Please turn your phone off and if you need counsellors, they're outside to help you. <laughs> I, I feel the same way. You know, it, uh-huh. you just fall down a hole with social media. You've done nothing with your life. <laughs> you just go down the hole. Go and do something more creative. Um, walk the dog, anything. Talk to a human being. Uh, form a relationship. I mean, read a book, watch a movie. It, how do you find this, Mark, that you go down, you go down a hole with social media? <clears throat> I try not to bother with it too Do you? Much. Are you, you, you I mean, quite I've deliberately do discipline yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not the sort of person that goes <clears throat> to a restaurant and takes a picture of his food and no. on no. social media. I know it's, it's just... It's just Don't be me. that person. I'm, I would be kind of one of those guys that <laughs> <laughs> lurks to see how everybody else or what everybody see, this else... is, is it. You're, in, in you're a journalist. You're a lurker. You're, yeah. in, you're in there going, where's my next story? Yeah, well, that's that's kind of what I would use social yeah. media for because, yeah, people do get carried away with themselves on it. They kind of they think they're they're safe behind a keyboard. Right. Um, they'll, they'll sometimes they they might have had a wee glass of wine or two in the evening and will say something that this is it can be taken out of context. So on a Friday night, it, you're you're there, I, Mark. You're there on a Friday night at about ten ten thirty. Check out all yeah. the politicians. See who's drinking. <laughs> you don't get too many politicians at that time of night, no. unfortunately. But it's, it's a pity we don't. But, um, but there's one, one or two pop up the odd time. But you know, to me, social media is more a tool for me to see what other people are doing in their lives. Yeah. Um, but you'll find that it's always the really bad things or the really good things that they put out there. Kevin, what's your advice to people who think they are literally, you know, like addicted to? To all this social media stuff and, and, and in some ways their identity is being propped up by it. It is, but they, they should really see behind the false sense of it, really. And also, you know, anyone anyone can look good on social media, really. It you know, really can with filters and mm. and then you meet them in real life and you go, my goodness, you know, there's know. there's that joke about stop stop using filters on Instagram because if you go missing We'll be looking for you that looks like Angelina Jolie yes. instead of looking for a potato head. Yes, you're right. And I sometimes <laughs> see people putting amazing photographs of their lives on Facebook or whatever. And you kind of wonder, what's that life really like? Yeah, because that's just the projection. Anyway, we're getting too philosophical. Kevin Curran and Mark Bain, thank you both very much. That's it from us. Here's you go.